Hey guys, happy Tuesday. Uh, welcome back to the Fit for Christ YouTube channel. I'm Melissa and I know that I haven't been on here in about a week. Uh, let me just say that uh, I am officially a soccer mom, so life just got a little bit bu busier, but I'm super grateful and I'm excited for my kids um, to be embarking this new journey if you are a mom of kids who have been in sports, um, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm, again, super new to this, um, so just trying to adjust my schedule a little bit more. Um, but I'm definitely so excited to be back. Um, and because I don't know when I'm going to share another prophetic video, I said, Lord, you know, as always, I always ask him to lead me to what video he wants me to share. But I said, okay, Lord, you know, what do you want your children to know? What do you want them to hear? Um, so besides some Julie Green videos that I, I typically share, right? I also like to read prophetic words from Elijah List, right? So if you have not yet subscribed to ElijahList.com, I'm going to drop the link in the subscription box. Um, I have been so blessed by Steve Schultz and what he's been doing the past couple of years, right? Um, he is on Elijah stream. Um, he also leads Elijah Clips, which is another um, channel that they have, but it's condensed prophetic words for those who may not have the time to listen to 45 minute, an hour, two hour videos, um, which I love, right? So that kind of keeps you in tune with everything that's going on without you necessarily, I guess, having to hear the entire thing right if you can please do but if you can't there are those shorter shorter clips which i will leave the link to that youtube channel as well um so yeah so i love elijah list they have amazing prophetic words from so many different people um because of him i've been able to um meet virtually um or come across some amazing prophets amazing women and men of god um during this season right so I wanted to give you guys a word that I feel like would help you. And, and I'm including myself in this as well. Um, so this prophetic word stood out to me and it is called love is dripping from Jesus's very heart. So I pray that you all prepare your heart to be able to receive. Um, and I felt the Lord tell me that for any of you who may be new, you know, to on this walk with God, um, although you may not fully understand the Bible, like I come across so many words that I don't even know how to pronunciate, um, but don't let that discourage you. Even if you don't understand, this is where we get to ask the Holy Spirit to help us understand, right? To open up our spiritual ears, our spiritual eyes, our spiritual understanding so that he can give us the revelation, right? Um, so let's go ahead and get into this prophetic word. This prophetic word is from uh, Steve Porter. He resides in Rochester, New York. And again, I'll leave the link so that you guys can go back and read it for yourselves if you'd like. All right, so this word starts off with um a couple of scriptures so the first scripture i'm going to read is psalm 45 8 myrrh aloes and cassia perfume your robes in ivory palaces the music of strings entertain you your royal robes release the scent of suffering love for your bride the odor of aromatic incense is upon you from the pure and shining place Lovely music that makes you glad is played for your pleasure. That one was Psalm 45, 8. The verse is literally burning inside me. There's so much to it. Look closely at the first part of verse 8. Myrrh, aloes, and cassia perfume your robes. When you study myrrh, it speaks of a suffering love. One that Jewish rabbis refer to as the tears from a tree. This speaks deeply and passionately of suffering love. Did you know that your heavenly bridegroom has suffering love for you? A love that was bought with his precious blood? Love is dripping from Jesus' very heart. He also wears the sweet aroma of aloes and cassia. 
which speaks of the anointing spice that's burned in the holy place. He is wrapped in the sweet aroma of heaven. And because you spend time waiting on the Lord, you now carry that same aroma, that same fragrance, that same perfume. In fact, you're perfumed by the very manifest presence of the Lord, our sweet master Jesus, because you have spent time with the sweet aroma himself. Are you after the sweet aroma? Are you willing to spend enough time with him to be saturated in it? You won't have to wear a sign that says you're powerfully anointed, nor will you have to boast about your ministry. You won't have to tell others that you carry the favor of God, because if that's the case, the aroma will fill the room where you are, even if no one mentions it. When your gaze is aimed at your heavenly bridegroom, that sweet perfume will follow you everywhere. I'm speaking of suffering love, and it's coming through to you right now. As you read, as you listen, his love can't be compared with anything else, making it entirely overwhelming. I love this term, out of the ivory palaces, in verse 8. Do you want your heavenly bridegroom to leave his ivory palace to visit you personally? Do you want your holy high priest, Jesus, to come and spend time with you? Is that your deepest heart's desire? All his garments are fragrant with the scent of myrrh, permeating their every fiber. His suffering love is so real and powerful that it melts the heart. Those tree-born tears are tears of love and adoration for us his true bride of Christ. The spice, the cassia, that burns in the holy place is anointing you even, is anointing you even as you read this, as you listen to this. The oil spills over and runs down with your face, soaking your garments. This spice is the covering of the Lord himself that envelops you completely. This is his suffering love. He gave his all for you. Delight in it. In fact, Jesus went to the cross just for you. He didn't give up on you, even when it seemed like all hope was lost. He endured the pain and suffering that came from being your lover for eternity, just so that you could be saved. The truth is, there's nothing he wouldn't do for his bride. I think about my wife, who as of now has stood for me for almost 27 years. Even when we didn't have two cents to rub together, she was still there. When nobody knew our names, she was there. When we went through pain, she was there. She stood with me when nobody else stood with me. We have two daughters, one who's married and has given us a beautiful granddaughter. Another daughter is in college. I think all that she's done for me, all the time she stood with me when she didn't have to, there's nothing I wouldn't do for her. I love and honor her. I tell her that every single day. I sing love songs to my wife on a daily basis. I do. I'm not boasting when I say I love my wife. Nobody knows you better than your spouse. I honor her in the Lord and rejoice that God has what God has done in our marriage. He has moved mightily indeed. The Lord is declaring the same thing. There is nothing he wouldn't do for his bride. Can you hear him proclaiming these words of love? I love her with an everlasting love. I tenderly call her by name. Refer to Jeremiah 31.3 for that. Every hair on her head is numbered. I keep track of of every tear she's ever cried, storing it in a special bottle in heaven. That is in Luke 12, 7 and Psalm 56, 8. She is precious. She is my treasure. She is my undefiled one. She is my dove. This next scripture that he shares is in Song of Solomon 4, 
Verse 9, you have captured my heart, my treasure, my bride. You hold it hostage with one glance of your eyes, with a single jewel of your necklace. Isn't it stunning to realize that you've moved the heart of God, that you move the heart of Jesus? When he looks at you, he says, you are my treasure. You are my dove. A dove is a very unique creature in that it has tunnel vision. It looks straight ahead, never looking to the right or left, never distracted or looking elsewhere for other lovers. A dove is nothing like a mule, which has a well-earned reputation for stubbornness. You have to put blinders on the side of a mule's eyes because they're so easily distracted. He doesn't call us mules though, he calls us doves. My dove my love, my fair one. The Lord has tunnel vision toward you and me. He looks at us and he sees no one else. I don't understand how that can be any more than I understand how it can be eternal and have no beginning. But the truth is, whether I believe it or not, I have Jesus all to myself. The same is true for you. We can both romance our divine bridegroom touching the very heart of Jesus. There was a time not long ago when the Lord continually woke me up in the middle of the night to be with him. One particular night I was sitting in my chair when I began to weep, feeling the heart of God. I was surprised to find that he was deeply touched, that I decided to get up and spend time with him during the late night hours. I knew I touched the heart of my father that made me weep. To think that a guy like me, Steve Porter, can touch the heart of God, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the one who created the heavens and the earth. I can touch the heart of God Almighty when I respond to his invitation to get up because he wants to spend time with me. Can you believe it? that we can actually have close personal relationship with our creator. That we can have it if we're hungry enough and desperate enough to seek it. Otherwise, we can simply go on autopilot, living normal Christian lives, just going through the motions before finally going to heaven when we die. I don't want to go to the other side as an average Christian. I want Jesus to come running toward me. When I enter the throne room, wrap his arm, loving arms around me and say, I'm so glad you're here. I've been waiting for you. Lord, don't let my love be ordinary. Let my heart boil over with suffering love for you. May he come to us wearing his glistening white garments. May he come to share his heart. Our Lord always responds to a hungry heart, one that is eternally craving him. Oh, how I desire to always have a fervent heart. I say, Lord, may I never lose that hunger. May I never lose that desperation, that deep desire for your abiding manifest presence. May there always be an ongoing revival of longing inside me. The high priest of our Lord comes to us from his ivory palace, a holy place. He reveals himself because he desires nothing more than our time and attention as we worship him sincerely with all that is within us. His suffering love and anointing rest upon all those who respond to the call to draw near. So come, let us approach the throne of grace with confidence, knowing that we will receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. No matter where you are or what you're going through, the Lord is always waiting for you with open arms. He desires nothing more than to spend time with you and lavish his love on you. Draw near to him today and experience the incredible power of a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. He longs to reveal himself to you in the midst of sincere worship. 
If you respond to his call to come near, you will be blessed with his suffering love and personal manifest presence. What are you waiting for? Come, join us at the feet of our Lord. I truly feel to pray right now just because, as you guys know, I'm a huge crybaby, but that is just my way of being able to express my heart for Jesus. And I truly feel this word is Father. We come to you and we just want to thank you for this word that you have given Steve Porter. Father, we ask for your forgiveness, for making excuses to not spend time with you. Father, I know that we will never be able to understand your undeniable love for us. You loved us so much that you sent your son, Jesus, to die for us so that we could be together for eternity. Father, thank you for loving us, Lord. Thank you for this revelation of your love and how much you desire to just spend time with us, to just pour your love out on us, God. Father, I ask you, Lord, that we may be obedient Whenever you may wake us up in the middle of the night, Father, I ask you that you give us strength and Holy Spirit, we ask you that you just wake us up. Let there be no hesitation so that we can spend time with you and we can just be still in your presence. We can just soak your love. We can just be ready to hear what it is that you want to say, what it is that is on your heart, Father. So, Father, right now, I pray that your Holy Spirit may touch and be with your people who are watching this video right now. And I thank you, Lord. I thank you for this word. You are so good. And this word just gave me a deeper understanding of your love for us, how we can have that personal relationship with you and that all you desire is to spend time with us so thank you jesus we love you and we bless your name in jesus mighty name amen and amen um man this word wow i'm so glad that i shared this word with you all. I'm so glad that I came across this word. Um, I needed this. I'm sure a lot of you needed it as well. I would love to hear what you guys felt as you were listening to this word. And I, and I again, encourage you to go back and read it and just soak in it. I don't know if you guys noticed. I tend to talk fast sometimes um i'm trying to get better at that but i truly felt to slow down because when you slow down and truly focus on every single word they come alive and so i truly felt the love of god and i hope that you guys felt that too so i pray that this word blessed you um again i'm not sure when i'm going to be back on here um But I promise you that (laughs) I will try to be on here before Friday. If not, you guys may see me Friday night. All right. Um, And I have some exciting things to share with you all. Again, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to share that with you before or after. um, But just stay tuned. All right. So God bless you. I love you. God loves you. And I'll see you guys in the next prophetic video.